This is Ross Brodsky and Pavel Schleif from ICS Software, and you are watching Eye on Business. Hi, I'm Cynthia Kirkaby, the CVO of Adaptified Inc., and you're watching Eye on Business. Good afternoon, this is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business for Ion Business. I want to introduce you to Dan Lubeck of Solus Capital. He's the founding uh, partner uh, for a private equity firm. And Dan has been a guest of mine before, and we want to cover some other issues. Great to see you again. Great to be back. You coming in. Thank you. Thank you. So the last time we talked about the role of a PE company in helping build a company. And we talk more on the business side, but I want to flip it around and talk about what you can do or what your company does in looking at a CEO and looking at the culture of a company and how that can distinguish that company. But first, tell us a couple of things about yourself. Well, about myself or about my firm? You can take either one. They're both <laughs> kind of intricately related, I would assume. About myself. Uh, I... Uh, Love living in Southern California. I'm an active uh, outdoor sport participant. I have four kids and a wonderful, demanding wife, and uh, feel very lucky to be able to do what I do for a living. All right, so now we know why you have to work for a living. <laughs> exactly. We get that. That I ended up <laughs> working for a long time. Uh, yeah, I, I, believe me, I can appreciate that <laughs> one too. Uh, but I want to talk about CEO uh, first, and then we'll talk about culture. When right. you look at a company to purchase, how do you regard the management team, the one that exists in place when you make that purchase of a company? Uh, it's a great question and I, I think I'd like to differentiate Solus. There's a lot of PE firms out there, more than Fair ever, enough. and they all have different philosophies and our, you know, I've been doing this for over two decades. Solus has been around since uh, 2002 and really our philosophy has been unchanging and won't ever change. We believe investing is about betting on leaders and leadership teams, not buying parts or all of companies. Okay. And to go back to your question, we don't think you can really divide between the CEO and the leadership team and the culture because they're very, uh, they're very related. The, the, the leaders of the company are gonna set the culture and the culture is gonna drive the, the business. Okay, so, so let's d delve into what do you really, so we're all on the same wavelength. Okay. What do you mean by culture? What are the components of culture? And can you give us an example uh, from a company you're dealing with where that culture is really set and, and has done well for that company? So to the first part of your question, what is the culture? It really is, you know, what is the social fabric of that company? Are they a company that is proactive or reactive? Are they a company that deals uh, with great transparency with customers or not? Uh, so these are the type of things that it may not even be stuff that's talked about. It may be stuff that's really talked about and identified and put up on the wall as, as guiding principles. So those all go into the culture, the social fabric of what drives a company, what makes a, an employee feel comfortable and a part of it or not. Um, now, let me, th I'm trying to think of what a, a great, uh, well, I'll give you one example. So we, we, made an investment in two guys that were running a division of an English public company and it was a little software company. And great guys, great product, had been around for 20 years, um, interesting customer base. Neither of these guys had ever run a company on a standalone basis, been responsible for a P&L. One was really the CEO one was, and the operating guy, one was really the financial guy and, and the CFO. And really liked the people, very high integrity, really believed in what they did, 
uh, we made the investment, really betting on them and their ability to take what we thought had a tremendous amount of potential and realize that potential. And I'd say for the first year or so, um, we didn't, you know, we did come out of the gate like we'd hoped. Uh, that's right. not unusual. Correct. Uh, and ultimately, after a lot of uh, conversation, sometimes really locking horns with our, our partners in the investment, the guys running the company, we had an epiphany. And our epiphany was is that we had been searching for a VP of sales, searching for a VP of sales, searching to run sales, and we realized that our VP of sales had been sitting in those board meetings all along, and it was the guy that, the leader, the CEO, that really he needed to redefine his role as a sales leader. And I will tell you, he embraced that. Uh, he started living that. He looked at how he spent his time and shed things that weren't sales related. And what that did, and getting back to your question, was it actually changed the organization and they became a more sales focused organization. They watched him go out from behind his computer screen and fly to the UK to build relationships with generals, fly to the Middle East and build relationship with princes, right, right. and ultimately created a tremendous sales culture that then other people saw how that was done and joined the bandwagon. So they had some great cultural aspects that made them a great company, but that transition, that addition of being a sales thinking culture transformed that company. Now, was this part of your vision? You wanted, you saw the problem, you saw the change in that they needed to have more of a sales oriented culture. Did you say to the CEO, you know, you're really a great salesperson. We'd like to exit you from the CEO role. What, what did you do? I mean, <laughs> because isn't this an well, ego issue for most people? Sure, yes. Uh, so when we make an investment, the basic premise, and we always share this with the people that we're going to be working with, is, is our way, the way we create success for you is not to change who you are and what you do. It's to figure out what you do best, what you love to do, and have you spending more of your time doing that. So to get maximum leverage from all the leaders in the organization and then fill the holes where the, the holes need to be filled. So to answer your question, we believe there was a opportunity to improve sales and marketing. Um, and ultimately we realized that the way to do it was have this leader take that and that be his, we didn't change the title but that he needed to envision himself as the leader of sales and marketing. And it was an epiphany at a board meeting. It was the result of some fairly contested conversations. Um, it wasn't immediately embraced. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, but the way we try and create change is never through force, it's through persuasion. And ultimately, um, he saw it our way. And, and I think if you asked him today, he would say that was the turning point for him and for the company. So you're in a sense, I'm, I'm now nicknamed you the velvet sledgehammer of the <laughs> PE, you know, organizations. But uh, I wish I had a sledgehammer because sometimes it would be nice, but I feel like we never do. Because we partner uh, and because we bet on leaders, uh, it, we rarely have a sledgehammer. And if we had one, usually it wouldn't work to accomplish yeah. what we need and, to and do. And I totally agree. So in wrapping up, I, I know, I'd like to have you back and talk about more issues uh, particularly on differentiation and how culture plays in. But if you can sum up, you know, two or three business concepts that come out of culture and CEOs, what would you tell our viewing audience of the things that you should look at or the things you need to do to be successful based upon what we were just talking about? Understand what your culture is and what you want it to be. And if there's a difference, make sure that you get to where you want it to be. Two, uh, and I'll say this, it's not directly answering your question, but it is a derivative of it. One of the biggest things we do to add value is we help companies develop a strategy. Good. And a culture is a big part of strategy. A strategy is a vision of what you want to be. And if a company, if most of the companies that we end up working with, which are, are typically private companies, somewhere between 15 and 100 million in revenue, have never taken the time to develop a clear strategy. They'll do a budget, but not a strategy. Right. And just that act alone will create a lot of value and tremendous uh, enhanced success. I appreciate that. You know, I look at Tom's shoes, uh, I look at Zappos, I look at even Google, 
and their unique culture has enabled them to grow and be you know the leading companies in their industries so I really think culture and especially the implementation of it by the CEO certainly makes sense and I really appreciate again your time coming in here and sharing your views and your knowledge and this is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Ion Business